Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Today I will show you how I leveled up my Scion for a Wardloop budget build. It can be quite frustrated to level these builds up, just because they are pretty much all around the passive tree and can be hard to make it work. It's not going to be quite as in-depth as previous videos, just because the fact if you are going for a Wardloop build, they don't come cheap. So with that, I'm going to have pretty much all uniques for this leveling guide and some of them might be a little bit more expensive than a normal leveling gear setup. Before we jump into the guide, just a quick reminder to like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. And with that out of the way, let's begin. Let's start to talk a little bit about the ward up build that I'm planning to make. I won't go that much in depth on how Warloop works in this video, but more about that in the upcoming build guide instead. So Warloop is not cheap, as I mentioned. I'm going to make a build that's under 20 exalts, and that's pretty cheap for these kinds of builds. Let's go over real fast how it all works. So first you get enough flask duration, and recovery so you can have your flasks up all the time. Then you start a self damage loop by summoning these minions that makes us take damage on death. It will then trigger a loop with cost when damage taken and it will then begin to shoot out all our spells who is linked with cost on damage taking as well. Pretty cool stuff. We also won't receive any damage pretty much with the Olroth resolve which makes this whole idea possible. You can still take damage and die though, but mostly from just larger hits. So this makes it so we just can run around and look on YouTube all day while we are playing and it will just out aim and kill everything in his path. Very awesome playstyle, just how I like it. For this playthrough we are going to use Hello Pump technique and this is a very popular way to level up at a later stage in a league. How it works is that you must be unencumbered for this to work. And this means that you cannot have anything in your weapon, shield or glove slot. But in addition to that we gain 60% more attack speed and we also gain 14 to 20 added attack physical damage per 10 dexterity. So the goal here is just to stack as much dexterity as possible and this will work very good for us as we can mainly just use the path around the passive tree providing attributes and not having to worry about attack damage or spell damage for instance. So with that explained, let's go over the gear and the skills that we are going to use. For the gear we are going to use the Tabula Rasa for an easy 6 link. And for the helm we're going for gold rim to use it for all the elemental resist it provides. For the boots we are going with 7 league step for the extra movement speed. We are also going to use 2 wands with plus 1 to all cold spell skill gems. And here you can choose pretty much whatever you want. I'm going to use cold skills so this is the obvious choice for me until we get to use hello palm. And for the skills we are going to use Freezing Pulse. We're also going to have Frost Bomb and also Frost Blink. And this you want to link it with Arcane Surge, added Lightning Damage, and also added Cold Damage. And this is going to be our starter setup until we can use Hello Palm at around level 15. And once you get there, we can then use the jewel call One with Nothing. And this is going to provide us with the Hello Palm technique. For the rest of the gear, we are using Astramentis Amulet for all the attributes it provides. In this one we can also put Anointment with 3 clear oils, so we get additional 32 dexterity. Very cheap, very useful. For the rings, we are using Le Heap of All which is providing us with all attributes, some increased damage, and also to all elemental resist. For the belt, we are going to use Darkness Enthroned, and here we're going to put in two Abyss Jewels, 
with as much dexterity as we can get. So these two together have around 40 dexterity total and with the belt we gain a 75% increased effect of socketed abyss jewels so we do get additional 30 dexterity from these two jewels. And these two that I have is for level 32 so before we can use them you can use pretty much whatever you want. I usually go with just a normal rare belt instead. And for the Yuval sockets, we have some different ones to choose from. First, we have the Fluid Motion, and these are great to use for converting strength to dexterity. So when you are passing through a strength area in the passive tree, you can put these on these sockets. We also have Careful Planning, and these are pretty much the same as the previous one, but for intelligence instead. And for the normal ones, we just want as much dexterity as we can get. And if you can get some life there as well, that's awesome, but these can be quite expensive. And let's continue with the gems, once we transition for Hello Palm. And here we have Smite, which is going to be our main ability. And this we want to link with Ruthless Support, and also added fire damage. Melee physical damage, elemental damage, and lastly, faster attacks. Next, I like to use Ancestral Warsheath, just for the extra damage for bossing. Link this with faster attack support. And also, we want elemental weakness, and lastly, a level 1 life tap support. For our last setup, we have Hatred Aura for additional damage. We got Hero of Ash, and then we want Flame Dash with a level 1 Life Tap support. For Flask, I like to go with 1 Life Flask and 1 Mana, 1 Quicksilver for speed, and a Silver Flask for Unslot, and lastly just a Grand Knight for the additional armor it provides. Let's move on to the passive tree, and here you can see the passive tree for the Wardoop build. For leveling, we are going to use most of the paths that I'm using here. Uh, it's going to be very simple, as I mentioned earlier, we just want as much dexterity as possible, and uh, yeah, so just start from the beginning. So, we're gonna start here, taking the resist nodes down to Sentinel. And we want to follow this path down here, all the way down till we get to this large jewel cluster. And here we want to put one with nothing, so we can gain the Hello Palm technique. And you can also take this note here for some more intelligence, because it can be quite uh, hard to keep up with intelligence at start. Next up, we have these basic jewel slots here, and these two you want to put your normal jewels with just as much dexterity in them as possible. Next up, I like to go down here and take this jewel socket, and here you want to put fluid motion, which transfer the strength to dexterity. And we can follow the path down here, to the big dexterity node down here. After that, move up here, grab the life nodes, and here as well, at the life mastery, you can go and take 50 plus to maximum life. After that, go to the left, and here also you can put in fluid motion, so we transfer the strength to dexterity. Same here, continue the way, and take the big dexterity node right there. After that, I like to go down here, grab the intelligence, dexterity, art of the gladiator for increased attack speed, and ignore all the movement speed penalties and some dexterity as well. And go to bravery just for some more life. Next up, we continue our way upwards to this jewel socket over here. 
And here we can put careful planning. And same as before, this transfer all the intelligence to dexterity. And moving all the way up here to agility for additional 30 dexterity. Next up, going to your right and go up. And here we can go to cruel preparation, grab this life here for some more survivability. After that, go to your right and take this socket here and put another careful planning here as well. After that, I like to go to the right, take Arcanist Domination and go for Heart and Soul for life and mana and practical application for yeah, some more elemental resist and some stats there as well. Next up, we will continue our route down here and we just want to grab all these nodes here go here more dexterity and attack speed go for heart of the oak some more life and to the right here follow the dexterity nodes and i like to grab these life nodes over here and follow the path upwards here and this is pretty much the tree you won't go any further than this and the reason that we stop here is because we are going to use this a big jewel cluster when we are transitioning to the war loop build. And let's quickly go over the ascendancies as well. First, you want to go for the dexterity node and the passive point. For the second lab, you want to pick ranger ascendancy and go with pathfinder. And also one additional passive point. For the third lab, you want to go Path of the Ranger, so we can allocate passives from the Ranger starting point instead. And also one in Intelligence. And when you do your Uber lab, one point here, go with Witch Ascendancy, and you will finish up with Elementalist. So from Act 1, we are going to use Freezing Pulse from Level 1. At level 4 we are going to use Frost Bomb and also Frost Blink. It's really nice to have your mobility skill getting boosted by your two wands. Making it so we can most of the time just use our Frost Blink to move around and also making a decent amount of damage. Here we want to add Arcane Surge from start and then we can add added lightning damage and also cold damage at level 8. Another thing that you can add is also Clarity and Vitality for some quality of life early on. And this you will obtain at level 10. Once we get to Act 2, you will be able to change to Hello Palm at around level 15. We can then remove all the cold skills and also both of the ones, because we are not going to need them anymore. Once you get Hello Palm, you can then put the Smite skill with Ruthless Support, added fire damage, and once you're at level 18, you can then put in melee physical damage, elemental damage, and lastly, faster attack support. This is going to be your setup until you can swap to the wardrobe setup at level 70. Don't forget to put in your flame dash as a mobility skill once you do change to Hello Palm. And you will also be able to use Herald of Ash for some extra damage at level 16. And for the bandits, you want to kill them all for the extra two passive points. But you could also go with saving Alera, because we are going to be benefiting from both the crit multi and the elemental resist. Wardlope overall can be quite hard to get your elemental resist capped, so knowing that it is an option to get more from the bandits can be helpful. And this can also be respect and change later on in the game. Once you're at Act 3, you can then start to use the Elemental Weakness Curse for some boosted damage on bosses once you hit level 24. And you can also start to use Hatred if you want to. If you are still using Vitality at this point, you might have to remove it if you are going for Hatred instead. At level 28, you can then start to use your Ancestor Warship Totem for some extra damage on bosses. At Act 4, if you still got the open skill slot, you can put in a stone golem to boost your survivability for some extra region that it provides. 
Other than that, I did my first lab after I killed Malachi, the last boss in Act 4. And here we want to go down right for the Ranger Ascendancy. And this is giving us plus 40 to dexterity, so great damage boost. And we also gain a passive point as well. The rest of the acts are just to run through pretty much. I did my second lab at late Act 8 and just went with the Pathfinder node, which is a very important one for the war loop to work. But we also gain some movement speed and attack speed during any flash effects, so it's good for us now while we are leveling up as well. After Act 8, it can feel like the damage is falling behind some, but it's no problem running through the rest of the campaign. Life can also be an issue, but as all the hardcore players say, just don't get hit. Simple, right? <laughs> Anyways, it can be easy to fall behind on some levels also. Don't feel afraid to stay a while on, let's say, Blood Aqueduct at Act 9 to gain some more levels. I got to level 61 once I defeated Kitava on Act 10, and it's really no point in rushing anyways, cause we can't start to use the gear for the Warloop until level 70 anyways. But if you same as me, and you are falling behind on the levels, what I did was just went back to the Desecrated Chamber, and here I leveled up all the way to level 65. After that I bought some eggs of breach stones and did them until I got to level 74. And I know I said that you can start at 70 and you can. I had some extra breach stones over and it would just be a waste to having them to lay around. And even though you can start at level 70, it would still feel kinda weird to start at that level. Uh, the ideal level I would prefer would be to start at level 75. But back to the breach stones. If you don't got the currency for it, just go and check in the global chat 820. There's most of the time full of people looking to do bridge stones and just ask and join them. After that I went back and I did some respecting, uh, around 30 regrets I think, but most of the peasantry is where it should be, so all good there. Equipped all the gear, checked so everything worked. And then we did the Merciless Lab, the third one, and here we want to take the path of the Ranger so we can start from the Ranger starting point in the passive tree. By doing this we save up some more passive points which will be used for better ones. And while we were at it, I just went and I did Urban Lab as well. Nothing can hurt us anymore. Go take the Witch Ascendancy and pick Elementalist as the last Ascendancy making us immune to elemental reflect, and also making exposure stronger. Alright everyone, and this was my leveling guide for my Warloop Scion. And I hope it might help you out if you are going to try it out for yourself. If you are interested in the build overall, I will put the POB in the description so you can check it out as it is right now. But if it is your first time, it might be kinda hard to understand how the build is working. Uh, what stats that are important and which one is not. Uh, there are a lot of things making this build work and I will try my best to explain everything that you need to know in the upcoming video for the actual build guide. If you watched all the way till the end I thank you for sticking by and endured my Swedish accent. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to show your support, it do mean a lot to me. And with all of that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!